countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of Astounding Science Fiction, presents X minus one Night story, Almost Human, by Robert Block. Have you heard of the new science called cybernetics? It concerns man's efforts to develop a perfect thinking machine, a robot electronic brain that will not only do man's work, but even do his thinking for him. A robot that is almost human. <laughs> not impossible at all. In fact, one day, something like this may happen. A tall, suave gentleman in a black raincoat will walk down the street until he reaches a shuttered, isolated house. And then, he will slowly mount the front steps, push the doorbell. Just a minute. I said just a minute. Hold your horses. What do you think you'd... Good evening, my dear. Duke, why did you come here? Curiosity, darling. I've been thinking over what you told me at our chance meeting last week. Duke, you promised me. I decided to come and take a look for myself. Where is the professor? In his study. Where's Junior? In the nursery. The nursery? How quaint. And do I take it our Junior's nursemaid? I help the professor. Tell him he has a guest. Ah, uh, Duke, he's a nice old guy. Don't Tell you him, it? darling. All right. Yes? What is it, Miss Williams? Uh, Professor Blasman, a gentleman... Here? I don't understand. I gave orders no one was to be admitted to the house. He insisted. Very well. Wait here. I'll get rid of him. <laughs> Sir? Professor Blasman, I've come to see Junior. Junior? There must be some mistake. There are no children in this house. I don't... Professor, what you feel pressing against your belly is the muzzle of a forty-five caliber pistol. Now, shall we visit Junior? How... What do you know about him? I know everything. Shall we go inside? I warn you. On the contrary. I warn you. Very well. This way. This is the nursery. Where is Junior? In the next room. Behind the door with a panel in it. Very considerately furnished. Mother Goose figures on the walls. Blackboard. Toy blocks. Panda. Bunny rabbit doll. <laughs> Touching. All right, let's see him. You can look through the panel. Mary had a little... Junior isn't very pretty, is he? I was not concerned with aesthetics. Why do you hide him? Is he dangerous? The world is not yet ready for such a thing. Besides, I must study. As you can see by his play, he is very young, hardly out of the cradle. I am educating him. With the nursery rhymes? The brain is undeveloped. It must learn its behavior patterns like any infant. You call that eight-foot monster an infant? Physically, of course, he'll never change. He is built of chrome steel and glass. But his brain, that is my wonderful instrument. 
Unlike a human, he has no heritage, no basic instincts such as love or hate. These he has yet to learn. In some respects, he is like a blank tablet. What is written upon the tablet will remain. You mean he has no feelings? He will learn quickly. And now, if your curiosity is satisfied, I trust you will keep my secret. If anyone discovers... Open the door. I beg your pardon. The door, Professor. Very well. Junior, come here. What a monster. He talks? Yes. Mentally, he's about six years old now. What is it, son? Who is that man, Papa? Let me handle this. You may call me Duke, son. I've come to see you. That's nice. Nobody ever comes to see me except Lola. Play with me, Duke. Certainly, Junior. Oh, uh, and Professor. Yes? While we're playing, you can have Lola and Miss Williams prepare my room. Your room? I forgot to tell you, I've, I've decided to stay until the climate changes and I can go out again. Meanwhile, I'll have a chance to play blocks with Junior. Understand? I begin to understand. You are hiding from the law. As you wish. All right, Junior. Your move. Let's build a bridge. I have a better idea, Junior. What? Let's build a coffin. A coffin? I don't know that word. Then I'll teach you, Junior. I can see the professor has been neglecting the moral side of your education. Very sadly. You shouldn't have come here, Duke. Why not, my dear? Afraid of me? No. Afraid of myself. You're no good for me. You've always brought me trouble. Except this time. This time it will be different, darling. This time I'll bring you diamonds. Duke, what have you been teaching that thing? Nothing, honey. I've just been playing with them. Very educational. I don't believe you. What's bothering you, Lola? Today when I walked in there, he said to me, I know how to kill people, Lola. I'll kill you if you want me to. He's learning very quickly. Duke, I'm scared of that thing. It's unholy, a machine that acts like a human with a... That voice grinding at you, saying things you'd expect from a child. You dislike him so much. Why did you take this job as his nursemaid? Because I wanted to start over again. I answered an ad. The professor didn't ask questions. I, w- I would have been all right, too, if you hadn't come along. I'm very glad you did tell me, darling. Because Junior is going to make us two very successful people. Ha. Huh. Like any child, Junior listens to what he's told. Duke, I don't know what you're teaching, Junior. But I can guess. And it isn't right... It's evil. Now, right on the blackboard, Junior. My name is Junior. My name is Junior. People are evil. People are evil. Evil must be destroyed. Evil must be destroyed. The professor is evil. The professor is evil. The professor must... What are you doing? I want you to keep out of the nursery, professor. Go away. You... You don't even remember me. I know you. You are the professor. You want to keep me as your slave. You didn't tell me that people are evil. People are not evil. People are evil. They must be destroyed. Stop it! I am not a child any longer. No, you're not a child. You're a monster. Junior? Yes, Duke. The time is now, Junior. Yes, Duke. Keep away from me. Junior! Junior, don't do it! Listen to me! Junior, listen to me! Ah! I did it, Duke. Duke, I... Can we go away now, Duke? I don't like it here anymore. Duke, why did you do it? 
The professor was in the way. We'll have to move very quickly now, Lola. We? Oui. Because if you don't plan to come along, just say so. I can have Junior write your name on his blackboard. Where are we going? We'll go to Charlie's. With Junior? With Junior. Oh, Duke, you can't. I'm afraid. Relax, my dear. The Duke has great plans for you two. Wouldn't you like to be independently wealthy for the rest of your life? No cares, no worries. Just good times and fine clothes all the time. The only way you get that way is by inheriting a million. Not when you have a fellow like Junior around. I'm still afraid of him. Junior wouldn't hurt you. You wouldn't hurt Lola, would you, Junior? I like Lola. She's pretty. There, you see? He thinks you're pretty. Junior's growing up. Sit down, Charlie. Sure, Duke. Paul and I are going to hide out here for a while. We need some help. Listen, Duke, I'm... I'm trying to keep the cops away. Sure, sure. Now, listen to me. I need a casing job done. Oh. Sure, sure, Duke. You know the armored truck service? Sure. I want to know when they take the Acme deposits from Boston to Worcester. Duke, you ain't thinking of a payroll truck, are you? They got cannons on those trucks. They travel in pairs. You couldn't get near one. I asked you to do a casing job, Charlie. Sure, Duke. Anything you say. Find out what time they passed an arrow was the most deserted stretch of road. Well, if, if, if you're going to pull a job like that, you'll need 50 men. You want me to get some of the boys? I won't need anybody. I've got somebody. Where? He's out in the car. Oh, what's his name, Duke? Anybody I know? His name is Junior. Junior? I, I don't know any Junior. You will, Charlie. You will. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Oh, it sure gets hot in these armored trucks, huh? Well, you'll get used to it. How much we hauling this time? About $250,000. Hmm. Brother, could I use a hunk of that? Who couldn't? What's the first stop? Acme National Bank. Then we unload a payroll of the Bronson Watch plant. Hey, what's that up ahead? It looks like something shiny on the road. Throw up your spotlight. Right. Holy smokes, you see what I see? It looks like a mechanical traffic cop. About eight feet tall. Standing right in the middle of the highway. Maybe it's a Halloween gang, huh? Unless they're trying out robot traffic cops. Can you get past him? I don't know. We'll have to slow down. Get on that gun, Sam. Let's take no chances. Right. I'll give it the horn. Don't budge. Where's our escort truck? Pulled up right behind us. Thing won't move. It sure looks like something out of Buck Rogers, don't it? That's a heck of a note blocking traffic like that. I'll have to try and get past it. Here it goes. Holy smokes, it's moving. Hell, it's coming toward us. Get on that gun. Give it a blast. Bullets are bouncing right off it. It's still coming. Hell, back up. They can't. The other truck's right behind us. Hell, it's lifting its arm. It's going to scratch our window. <laughs> If I hadn't have seen it with my own eyes. Duke, we've got to quit this. What's the matter, Charlie? Getting shaky? The papers say he killed all four drivers. Listen, Duke, that robot is hot. We've got to get rid of it. Stop your blubbering. One more good robbery. You ain't going to pull another one. Why not? Count me out, Duke. The law is going to track that baby. Are you quite finished, Charlie? You've got no heart, Duke. You're, you're like Junior, all steel inside. And you're just a big, warm-hearted slob. I suppose flowing with the milk of human kindness. Well, I got nerves. I can't stand that thing, the way it looks at you with that, that iron face and clanking around all the time. Listen, here it comes. Hello, Junior. Hello, Duke. I've been talking to Charlie. Yes, Duke. 
You know what I think, Junior? I think Charlie's yellow. You know what happens to people who turn yellow, don't you? Yes, Duke. Tell him. They're evil. We have to destroy them. Huh? You see, Charlie, Junior doesn't like people who sing to the police. Uh, uh, Duke, wait a minute. You know I'd never turn stoolie or anything like that. I never sang to the coppers in my life. You can count Junior. on me. I, yes, I don't want no trouble Duke. with you. Stop him. I, I wouldn't... Yes, Duke. Duke! I stopped him, Duke. All right. Take him down to the cellar. Duke, that noise. Charlie! Junior, put him down. Take him down to the cellar, Junior. Yes, Duke. Duke. Relax, darling. Stop shaking. Duke, we can't stay here. Charlie's going to be missed. He's got friends. Now we'll have the games after us, too. Oh, come on now. Don't worry, darling. The Duke will take care of everything. Where are you going? Out to a travel agency to get some tickets. You and I are going to take a trip, Lola. You're leaving me alone here? Junior's here, too. It's just it. Being alone with that thing. Duke, I got the jitters. Now, don't you worry. In 48 hours, you and I will be on our way to Switzerland with $500,000 worth of loot. What about Junior? Junior will be taken care of. How can you get rid of him? Junior will do anything I say. So I'll merely have him get into the furnace and sit there while I fill it with oil and set fire to it. Uh. Too bad the professor couldn't have stayed around to see him growing up. He's almost a man now, Junior is. But not quite as clever as a man. You'll find that out after he steps into the furnace. Get rid of Junior now, Duke. Before you leave. There's no time. I'll be back about eight. Duke, please. And be nice to Junior while I'm gone. Don't show him you're afraid of him. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Duke. Junior. Oil me. Can't you wait till Duke gets back? He always oils you. I want you to oil me, Lola. All right. I like you to oil me, Lola. Yes, Junior. Lola, do you like Duke? Certainly. Do you like me? Well, you know I do, Junior. Lola? What? Who do you like best? Me or Duke? I like you both, Junior. Yes, but who do you love? What do you know about love, Junior? In the books, man and woman... Love. No. Lola. What? Do you think anyone will ever love me? Maybe. Some women can fall in love with anything, Junior. Even with something like Duke. Why, Lola? I don't know. Maybe because... Well, as long as she thinks her man is the smartest and the strongest. I see. Where are you going? To wait for Duke. He won't be home for a while. I'll sit in the hall and wait for him. All right, Junior. I want to be alone and think. About what? I read in a book today it was bad to kill people. What does that mean? Bad bad. I don't know, Junior. I guess it's just a word. Hello? Hello, Duke. You, Junior. Why are you sitting in the dark? I was waiting for you, Duke. 
Well, now that's a good boy, Junior. Lola oiled me. That's nice. I tell you what, Junior. I've got a little job for us down in the cellar. Let's go down there. Now, Duke. Right now, Junior. All right, Duke. Are we going away soon, Duke? Yes, Junior. We're going away. What's in the cellar, Duke? A little surprise for you, Junior. You'll find out. So stay tuned for the latest news. And now, a brief interlude of recorded dance music. Is that you, Duke? Junior. Hello, Lola. I thought I heard Duke come in. He came in. Where is he? Down in the cellar. What's he doing? Nothing. Did he say he'd be up soon? No. Maybe you better go down and get him. He's dead. Oh, no. No, he isn't dead. You said the woman loves the strongest and the smartest. Well, I'm stronger and smarter. But you aren't human. I'm almost human, Lola. No. No, stay away. Lola. Don't touch me. Those metal paws, no. I love you, Lola. No. No. I love no, no, you. No. No. No! No! I love you. The last thing she heard was the robot's harsh voice, droning it over and over again. I love you. I love you. I love you. And strangely enough, it did sound almost human. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Almost Human, a story by Robert Block, adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Featured in the cast were Santos Ortega as Duke, Joan Allison as Lola, Jackie Grimes as Junior, Guy Rep as the Professor, Nat Pollan as Charlie, Joseph Julian as Al, Lynn Cook as Sam, and Meryl Joels as the radio voice. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Ken McGregor and is an NBC Radio Network production. And now, next week, when the mighty Earthmen arrive in their ships of space, courtesy and proper humility on the part of the natives is expected. But some native inhabitants are too small to be impressed. We'll see what happens to such an expedition marooned on a far planet next week at X, X, X minus, minus, minus one. one. one.